I, I don't know, you know, and that it's okay not to have opinions. And I notice a lot of suffering that, that comes both externally, I witness it, and also within myself from thinking that I need to have an opinion about everything or that I can be a judge of like the unfoldment of humankind and like the planet, like, like I can know that in any kind of real term. <laughs> Yeah, you know, when you sent me the invitation to, you know, for this podcast, you had, you know, you had a place for me to put my bio and, and I wrote down, you know, last year, foolish monk, this year, no change. <laughs> there is something I've found about really embracing that, you know, really embracing the not knowing. It's just a, in Zen, you know, they call it don't know consciousness. Like, is it possible to really, really just embrace that, you know? And yeah. Yeah. And, I love that you ask the question a lot, like what is between me and, and feeling free? Maybe what is between me and something I've, I've really kind of taken that. And I asked that in many, many different ways, but, um, that's one thing that's, that's clear to me, uh, that's between me and, and feeling free is, is the knowing, right? Like when, when I feel like I need to know and need to do a certain, certain number of things, I'm not feeling free. But if I am really like, I don't know, and I'm okay with that, I feel free, I feel light, it's fine. You know, there's a teacher, actually, both uh, I, both you and I know in the Kripalu tradition who has a great, because we we're talking about what, so this awakening, enlightenment thing, what the, you know, what is it? And he said, this is so simple, but I think oftentimes the best truths are are the most simple. He said, what if it's just the absence of desire? And that's so, that just, well, I keep coming back to that. Like, wow, so, so who am I in the absence of desire? You know, and in those moments, you know, when you're without desire about being someone who knows, that really is, that's freedom. It, it may just be a, may a, be a glimpse, but that's, that is freedom. And I think it's about stringing those little moments of glimpses together. It brings up another word for me, and that word is, is mature, uh, which is a word that I'm actually very interested in. What does it mean to be, to be mature? And I would say, actually, not having desires or maybe having less desires uh, is connected with uh, maturity. You know, I, I, I love that, that word maturity, you know, it shows up a lot in, 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 in Buddhist psychology and Buddhist philosophy, you know, that because when we, when we sort of start off and a great example is, is faith, you know, that because sort of childish faith is, is magical thinking, you know, of like, well, if I just, if I just think happy thoughts, everything will be okay. You know, then there's, there's another level of, of faith, you know, which is, Tell me what to believe, and, and I'll believe it because I, I want to belong to this tribe, you know. But then mature faith is, you know, for example, if you hear everything born of causes and conditions is, is subject to change, it's actually embracing skepticism and saying, wait a minute, is that, nah, is that true? And then rigorously investigating. And then, and then if that's true, that's mature faith, you know, and so it's just this beautiful element of like embracing, embracing skepticism and understanding that part of the flowering of that is that sense of mature faith. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed this content and think others might as well, please feel free to share and subscribe.